Wow, it's a lovely cold December day. I'm out in the hills near to Tring, which is where the museum has its outpost. And, well, we're just gonna go out and see what we can find. It's a super time of year just to see more wildlife and hopefully there'll be some festive treats along the way. Well, this is one of the, the great festive treats and it's the tree we most traditionally associate with Christmas. Of course, it's, it's the holly. You've got these lovely spiny glossy leaves which are evergreen and it's it's that evergreen quality which makes these plants so significant so significant for our ancestors who first regarded them as, as special and powerful because they could survive the, the horrors of the winter untouched the red coloration is thought to, to ward against evil so one of the things about the holly is that it's, it's dioecious, that means it's got separate male and female plants. And obviously only the female plants have got the, the lovely red berries, but to, to, to get the, the berries obviously we need pollination, so there has to be a, a male plant generally fairly nearby. And just looking across there, there looks to be a, a nice big holly. This is a, a male tree um, and we can tell that because it, it's flowering. Um, a bit unusual for this time of year I, I guess but we can clearly see the stamens, the anthers, so that the pollen bearing parts of the plant which only the male flowers have projecting out there so that they're going to be puffing their pollen into the, into the wind. Hmm. One of the, the great things about this time of year is, is you get to, to see so much more because there's, there's no canopy on, on many of the trees. And you can see these lovely mosses and liverworts, which are some of the great treasures of the, of the British flora. Mm. Well, this is the sweet chestnut, Castanea sativa, which is, is not a native British tree, one that's been grown here though for many hundreds of years. And within these spiky fruits, which open to these four valves, we can find, if we're lucky, some remains of the chestnuts. Sadly, in, in, in Britain, they don't generally ripen particularly well, so we don't have the lovely big fat chestnuts that you'd be buying in the supermarkets to, to make into your stuffing. It's a Christmas tree. The, the Norway spruce, Picea abies. So here we have the, the cone of the, of the Norway spruce. Very characteristic shape to the scales and the overall cone and the size of it, which helps you to identify which conifer you have. That and the foliage, which you need to look at too. Here we are at the, the base of a cherry tree. Something's uh, been having quite a feast uh, and you can still see the remains of that down here. These are the, the stones out of the centre of the cherries, which of course contain lots of good nutritious food if you can get in there. Now, I'm not too sure what's, what's actually done that, whether that's a squirrel or, or something else. So what I'd probably do is, is take that back to to some of my colleagues in the in the identification and advisory service in the museum and get one of my zoological colleagues to actually look at this and work out what sort of animal it is. Things are beginning to to thaw out and the winter wonderland's disappearing. And it's probably time for me to disappear too. Go and get a nice hot drink. But after you've had your Christmas meal, perhaps you could get out and see some of these wonderful things in the countryside as well. Go on, give it a go.